Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made galvanized panels. The overall process was pretty fun and I learned some new tricks that I'm really excited to show you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using this Schleich model. I chose this one because it's on the larger side, and I want this round corral to work for Collecta also, maybe even Briar Classics. These are dowels I ordered from Amazon measuring a quarter inch by 12 inches. They came in a pack of 50. I think I used 40 in total. Horse panels are typically a little longer than the length of the horse, so I used that logic to mark my cuts. The dimensions I ended up with for the panels were seven and a half inches long and four and a half inches tall which worked out nicely because I could use the whole dowel without any waste. I could have cut these dowels by hand with a little hacksaw, but I am not what you might call a patient person, but I am resourceful. So I came up with the handy idea of rubber banding them all together so I could make one single cut on the miter saw. The dowel log was really sturdy, so I felt the cut would go pretty well. But for insurance, I ended up adding rubber bands just on either side of the cut lines. You can never be too safe with this kind of thing. So tidy. I was pretty pleased with how clean every piece was cut. But like I said, if you don't have access to power tools, a simple hacksaw would work. It would, if you have the patience. So, I wasn't really sure how I was going to assemble these panels, and it did prove to be a challenge. I usually just sit down and figure things out as I go along. I'm not really big on planning when it comes to these projects. My first thought was to use wood glue because I know it makes nice strong joints, and I'm a creature of habit. But my first attempts ended up being monstrous fiascos. The smooth round dowels did not want to stay where I put them. Then, once I tried to clamp it, I couldn't get the thing on without the panel springing apart. I fiddled with it for about 20 minutes before I decided that I was just wasting my time. I really really didn't want to resort to hot glue, the lowliest of the glues, but I figured, hey, if I can at least get them stuck together, then maybe I can fortify them with some tiny nails or something. But the hot glue lasted for about three milliseconds before everything just fell apart in my hands. So I sat back and stared at these filthy rotten dowels for about 15 minutes before the obvious solution came to me. I have seen many talented people out there attaching parts of model horses with wire. So why wouldn't that process work just as well for my slippery sticks? I cut some little pieces of baling wire to use as joints. Then I found a drill bit that was the same diameter as the wire and began drilling holes in my dowels. If you don't have a drill, then there are small hand drills you can buy pretty inexpensively on Amazon. After getting all four holes drilled, I dipped the wire joints in glue and installed them. Then I drilled holes in the ends of the rails. All the drilling turned out to be somewhat tedious on such a small surface but I got it figured out. Also, I recommend wearing leather gloves as protection from the drill bit. Using wood glue, I fit the pieces together. It was pretty tricky in the beginning, trying to interlock all the wooden wire, but I got pretty good at it. Apparently it's an acquired skill. I had to rest something nice and heavy on top of the panels while they dried. This, this pot right here, this is what I used. Um, because if you don't, they will dry warped. After about an hour of drying, my first panel was rock solid and definitely not going to fall apart. I was really happy with how sturdy the whole stack of nine panels was. I might start connecting everything with wire. Once that was all done, I turned my focus to making the gate. I'm using the point of this awl to mark where I want to drill the holes. I switched to a larger bit that was the same size of the dowels and drilled some holes. I didn't need to drill holes for this portion. The same wire joint method would have worked just fine but I wanted my gate to be extremely sturdy. Then installed some dowels. I'm not 100% sure this step was necessary, but I do really like how nice it looked at the end of the project. I cut the dowel down to size, then cut three more for the other holes. I used the wire joint method to put together these sidebars. You might be wondering why I'm adding them at all. My theory is that the sidebars will allow the gate and panels to swing more freely. I 
I finished putting together the frame for the gate so that I could move on to making the latch. Installing some kind of gate latch was my next project. I fiddled around with ideas for a while before I threw together a simple slide bar. Ultimately, I would have chosen something more complex, but I was happy enough with it. I'm positive that one of you will come up with something much more innovative. If you do, let me know in the comments. In the days before this project, I brainstormed ideas on how to make butterfly clamps, like these ones here. I made some out of the tin of a pop can, but ultimately scrapped the idea. I realized that I wanted my panel to be reconfigurable and easily taken apart and stored, so I decided to experiment with making hinges, even though it doesn't cohere with the panels I'd imagined. It turned out to be much easier than I expected. I use a good length of wire for easy handling, and this handy little awl. Twisting bailing wire around the shaft, I make the beginnings of a hinge. This wire really is stiff and hard to manipulate, but that makes me confident that it will never bend out of shape once the hinges are done. I then pinch the coils together using pliers. I snipped off the excess, leaving enough length on the ends to be inserted into the wood. Here, I am pinching the two prongs into alignment so it will be installed straight on the panel. Now we have a perfect tiny hinge. Now I'll show you how I made the pins for the hinges. I just put wire over my lineman pliers and then hammered it down with a pair of wire cutters, then cut it down to size. Here's the important part. If you use this method, beat up the wire that will be inserted into the wood so that the glue will have something to cling to. I forgot to do this once and the pins came right out of the wood. Nice and notched. I made lots of pins and hinges for this project and got really fast at making them, but my fingers were pretty sore by the end of it. If you press the hinge prongs into the wood, it will leave an impression showing you where to drill. Then you can dip the prongs in wood glue and insert the hinge. For some of the hinges, I had to use pliers to force them into the holes I'd made. I counted this as a win since these will be extra sturdy in the long run. In demonstration of how sturdy they are when dried, I tried to remove the pin from the first trial panel. In the end, I had to use pliers because it was not coming out. After some final fiddling with the gate latch, I finally got it put together. Once I assembled the panels into a corral, I was extremely happy with how easy it was to rearrange into different shapes. And it's so fun and easy to put together and take apart. I would be lying if I said I didn't play with it at least a little bit before the painting stage in the project. The way the hinges work is also really satisfying. The next thing I addressed was imitating weld points. I wanted these to look like aluminum panels, and aluminum panels are welded together. I immediately knew that I would use hot glue for this portion of the project, but I was also wary that this might cause issues in the painting stage, since hot glue is notoriously difficult to paint. And I was right, but we'll get to that later. I do like the weld points created by the hot glue, but I was paranoid about how the paint would go on, so I only did a few. I'm using acrylic paint in metallic sterling silver. It's the perfect color to achieve the look I want. When I started painting, I immediately knew that I would need multiple coats. It didn't have the greatest coverage, but hey, it's an expensive paint and I like saving money. Here's how it looks with the second coat. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but it looks so perfect, just right for galvanized silver panels. I also painted the round dowels on the gate, leaving the square dowels bare because I wanted those to look like aged wood. So here it is. If you want to see how I aged and painted the wood, then check out the link in the upper right hand corner where I build stable doors demonstrating the aging and painting process of wood. I have to say, I'm pretty thrilled with the way the welded points look on the gate panel, but unfortunately I was right, they were extremely difficult to paint. With each coat, the paint just seemed to melt off the hot glue, leaving it bare, but I endured and managed to get it coated thoroughly. 
It took a while longer, but I'm actually glad that I took the time to do it. So that is the end of this tutorial. Uh, if you guys like this video, then please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified when new videos come out. Next up, I will be making wooden paddock fences and that should be fun, so stay tuned for that one. And I am also coming to the point where I'm going to be doing a giveaway for my subscribers. I'm going to be doing a video of me boxing up all the goodies for you guys so you can see exactly what's going to be in the giveaway. So uh, thanks for watching, friends, and I will see you next time. Okay, bud. Okay.